From high school math, we'll recall that a two-dimensional line can be represented in standard form by ax plus by equals c. Any point on this line will satisfy this equation. We can also describe the line in slope-intercept form with this equation, right? y equals mx plus b, where the slope m can be found by taking two points, such as our, our p1 and our p2 here, taking those two points and dividing the change in uh, y, the change in y over the change in x, right? Getting your, your rise over run, if you will. Right? This, tells you, this tells you the slope of the line. And of course, this is quite useful for testing if points lie on the line itself as well as seeing what the line is going to look like when extended to infinity along its slope. Another interesting way of representing a line given two points is to use this equation. So here we have uh, P0, which is some point on the line, some point on the line, like maybe this point right here. We can say that this point uh, on the line is equal to P, uh, the, the components of P1 plus some value T multiplied by the components of P2 minus the components of P1. Now, the variable T offers unique functionality in that it represents the distance between P1 and P2 that P0 actually lies on. And it represents this distance as a value between zero and one. All right, so uh, for, for, for a, a, a t value of 0 0.5, uh, p0, p0 would end up uh, being the point exactly in the middle of the line segment defined by p1 and p2. Now this will become very useful when we have to find line plane intersections uh, as as basically what we're trying to do is figure out how far along this line segment uh, does this point of intersection uh, actually lie. All right, so we will use this idea moving forward. Now expanding on this idea, we can consider a situation where we have a line as well as an arbitrary point in space. And what we want to do is determine the shortest distance between the point and the line, right? And of course, the shortest distance will be basically the, the vector from the line to the point where uh, this, this vector forms a 90 degree angle, right? There are many distances we could uh, try and uh, figure out here. Uh, you know, there, we, we, we could take Take the distance between this point and any uh, point along the line, but the shortest distance will be this, basically this perpendicular vector from the line segment itself. Now this distance, let's call it D, this distance can be found using this equation, which, well, has some familiar looking components. Well, basically a rearrangement of the line equation itself uh, making sure we grab the absolute value of that and dividing that by the magnitude. Just notice the difference here. We do use double bars to indicate magnitude and single bars to indicate absolute value. So, so we divide basically the result of the line equation by the magnitude of the vector from P1 to P2, right? So that, that would be the components of P2 minus P1. All right, so, uh, well, let's just quickly figure out the line equation for this, uh, this line segment right here. We can see that, uh, well, uh, uh, P, P1 is, is at the components 2, 1, P2 is at 3, 3. So we can see that, and let's just rewrite the slope intercept form of this line. And so we can see that the slope of this line is, well, it's rise over run, right? So the y component changes by two units and the x component changes by one. 
So our, our slope is 2. Right, so that is n, that is our slope. So y equals 2x plus, and then we need to find the y-intercept. So if we extended this line all the way down here, we would find that uh, we intercept the y-axis at y equals negative 3. So the, the slope intercept form of this line equation is 2x. Uh, so, so y equals 2x minus 3. Now rearranging this to the standard form of the line, let's just get this green color here. Uh, we obtain uh, negative 2x plus y plus 3 equals 0. All right, let's put c on the left side of the equation, setting it to 0, uh, giving us the proper rearrangement uh, for use in this equation. All right, so we, we have this part, um, and I, actually in a second we'll, we'll go ahead and do this in Excel. Uh, just to stay consistent here in these videos, uh, the only other thing we need to know is, of course, the magnitude of this vector from P1 to P2. Well, I'm using the same points here, so uh, we already know that magnitude from uh, the previous video when we calculated it. Right, and that was uh, 2.24 essentially, right? So uh, we'll, we'll just make a note of that. So the magnitude of P2 minus P1 is equal to 2.24, rounded to two decimal places. And with Excel open on the side here, let's uh, give ourselves some more space to work with and call this... Uh, shortest distance point to line. And let's go ahead and start uh, defining the variables that we already know. All right, so we already have our line equation here. We can make some columns for A, B, and C. So A is equal to negative 2, B is 1, and C is equal to 3. We're also going to need uh, x and y here, which of course are uh, the x and y components of this point, uh, so some arbitrary point in space that we're, we're trying to figure out how far away from the line it actually is. So let's, uh, let's test uh, the point uh, 1, 2, put that over here, uh, let's test the point 1, 2, so uh, let's say that x is equal to 1, and uh, y is equal to 2. And uh, finally, the only other thing we need to know here is uh, the, the magnitude of the vector from P1 to P2. And of course, we already have that calculated here. That's uh, around 2.24. Uh, but uh, let's just make another column here. Maybe let's put it down here. Uh, so the, the, the magnitude will just... We'll just say that that is equal to uh, what we have calculated in this cell right here. That way, if we want to uh, change the line segment that we're working with, uh, this, uh, this value will automatically update. All right, and finally, we are going to calculate uh, D. We're going we're to solve this equation for D and uh, calculate the distance covered between this, uh, this arbitrary point in space and, and the line. All right, so uh, D is going to be equal to the absolute value, the absolute value of A times X plus B times Y, so B times Y plus C. All right, so the absolute value of that uh, divided by the magnitude, which we have right here. All right, so uh, go going ahead and uh, letting Excel do that calculation for us, we can see we end up with a value of around uh, 1.34. All right, and so let's record our answer here. So uh, we can see that uh, D is equal to 1.34, rounded to two decimal places here. 
and uh, again, let's let's write in the point that we were testing here, just to uh, see just to see the the visual intuition behind this. Let's get rid of some of these extra lines we had drawn in here, and just call this uh, p zero, right? P zero uh, was defined at uh, one, two, that, that, is, that is the position of P0. And so what we just calculated here was this, this shortest distance here from P0 to the line between P1 and P2. And uh, let's, let's actually just do a quick visual estimation to see if our answer makes sense. Our answer of 1.34. This is why I love Photoshop for, for this sort of thing, right? We can just take this line segment here and let's just kind of measure it a little bit. So of course, my, uh, my drawing, my, my, my Cartesian coordinates here aren't absolutely perfect, but we can see, yeah, it's around 1.34 and uh, that, that does make sense as, a, as, as the result uh, for this uh, this shortest distance here from point to line. And this distance calculation is very useful on its own, uh, as it could be used, for example, in a game perhaps, to determine how far off a predetermined path an NPC is, and to, to use that to determine some sort of AI behavior. So we'll definitely be keeping this equation in mind as we move forward uh, and discuss plane equations. Let's do one other thing before we finish off this section. Let's actually use this same distance calculation to test a point uh, that we know uh, is already on the line. And um, actually, the point that we'll test here, let's, let's, call, let's, let's call it, um, let's call it P alpha. Uh, this will be the point, uh, 2.5, 2.5, uh, 2. All right, so, I mean, just by, just by looking at uh, this, uh, th these points visually and uh, observing what the slope is, we already know that this point will land on the line, but let's do it just for fun. Let's test the point uh, 2.5 and 2. So quickly plugging in the xy values for point alpha here, uh, uh, two and a half on the x and two on the y, we can see, well, the, uh, the, the distance calculation results in zero. And of course, this makes perfect sense, right? The, uh, a point which lies on the line itself should be zero units away from the line. All right, and let's, uh, let's, let's actually observe one final thing, which is, is very cool to relate this all back to uh, this, this line equation right here. And what we're actually gonna do is uh, just quickly, just quickly solve for, for t, for t equals 0 0.5, right? Let's think about it, right? Where along the line segment from P1 to P2 does P alpha lie? Well, it's, it's exactly right in the middle, exactly halfway along that line segment. So let's, let's just quickly solve this, actually, just for fun. Uh, so for the x components, and I guess let's, let's use this green color here to, to refer to uh, point, point alpha. So the, the x components will be equal to the x component of P1. So that's should, should probably use this color here. So that's two plus, and then our t value is 0 0.5 times x component of P2, three, let's get that orange color. So uh, three minus, three minus two, right? P2 minus P1, right? So quickly solving this, three minus two is one times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 plus two, so the, the x component, the x component of P, P alpha will be equal to 2.5. And again, I, and again, quickly solving for P alpha, y 
we can see that, well, the, the, the y component of p1 is, let's get that blue color, so, so 1 plus, and then the t value, 0 0.5, times y component of p2, so 3 minus, and again, let's do that in the right color there so we can see what's what. So 3 minus uh, a 1 again. And again, quickly solving this. So 3 minus 1 is 2 times 0 0.5 is 1 plus 1 is, is 2. All right, so 2.5 and 2. By, uh, by, by substituting in the t value that we know corresponds to the position along this line segment, uh, well, we ended up with uh, precisely the correct set of coordinates here. All right, so hopefully that was helpful in just seeing how all these equations work together and what we can accomplish using them.